Hi everybody, here's the second part of our 7.3 notes. We're going to start off with the last example for you guys to try on your whiteboard kind of things uh, for example two. So go ahead and pause now and give this a try. Okay, uh, remember that we're going to set it equal to x and we have log base b of y equals x. So we also have b to the x power equals y. This is our logarithmic base form. This is our exponential base form. So using those two things, we know that b is 64. We know y is 1 over 32. We're going to plug those into our formula. And we have b is 64. x, we don't know. That's what we're looking for. Remember, logarithms are exponents, so that's where our x comes into play. And y, we said, is 1 over 32. And we have to try and get these down to the same base. So I'm going to break 64 down. 8 times 8, using our factor tree, get it all the way down to its prime factorization. And we've done 64 a few times. Uh, so some of you might already know that it's 2 to the 6th power. Uh, we also have to bring that x down, and we multiply our exponents when we have power to a power. So 64 is actually 2 to the 6th power, still to the x power, uh, but power to a power means we multiply those exponents. And again, I have that up in the back wall, back in the corner by the happy face parabola. Right in the corner, power to a power, we multiply our exponents. We're going to do the same thing with the 1 over 32 here, but first we need to get it to be um, a positive, sorry, a whole number, not a positive number, a whole number. And in order to do that, we're going to rewrite it with a negative exponent. Remember, to bring it to the numerator, we change the sign of our exponent. So 32 is 8 times 4, 4 times 2. 2 times 2, and 4 is 2 times 2. So we have 6, sorry, 2 to the 6th x power equals, here we have 2 to the 5th power, to the negative 1st power. We're going to multiply those and get 2 to the negative 5th power. Now we have the same base. So whenever our bases are the same, we can set our exponents equal to each other. We're going to take 6x equals negative 5, divide by 6 to get that x by itself, and we get negative 5 over 6. So that is what x equals, which means log base 64 of 1 over 32 equals negative 5 over 6. Okay. A common logarithm is a logarithm with base 10. So we've talked about uh, natural logarithms, and that's base e. Common logarithm is a logarithm with base 10. And we write it without the base, without that 10, as just log of x. So if you see log of x, that means automatically it's base 10. Many measurements of physical phenomenon have very large ranges of value. So we report them using logarithms, because logarithms are exponents of the values. When we use logarithms instead of the quantity, we're using a logarithmic scale, uh, just like the Richter scale. Very common, uh, very popular. So if we look on page 453, they have a picture of the Richter scale there. And notice that when we go up by 1, for example, on the Richter scale, uh, an earthquake of 5 is not just one more time intense than an earthquake of four. Okay, energy released each time is times 30. So to go from four to five, it's actually 30 times um, more energy released to go up by one on the Richter scale. And again, the Richter scale deals with earthquake intensities. So let's look at problem three here on page 453. On page 453, it says, in December of 2004, an earthquake with magnitude 
on the Richter scale hit off the northwest coast of Sumatra. Uh, the diagram shows the magnitude of an earthquake that hit Sumatra in March 2005. The formula log of intensity 1 over intensity 2 equals magnitude 1 minus magnitude 2, that's what the I and the M stand for, compares the intensity level of earthquake, where I again is the intensity level determined by the seismograph, and M is the magnitude on the Richter scale. So based on the relationship in the Richter scale, this formula works. How many times more intense was the December earthquake than the March earthquake? So again, we're going to use the formula log base 10, so we don't need to write that, of intensity 1 over intensity 2 equals magnitude 1 minus magnitude 2. And here, the December earthquake was the one that we're comparing to March uh, for two reasons. One, it happened first, and also based on our question, how many times more intense was the December than March? We want to compare December, uh, March to December, December 1st. So, December was um, 9.3, according to our little paragraph here. So that's what we're going to plug in for magnitude of 1. 9.3 on the Richter scale. Magnitude 2 was the second one, the March earthquake. And according to our um, picture here, it says the magnitude is 8.7. It has that in yellow between Thailand and Malaysia. And we have log of our intensities, the ratio of our intensities. Okay, so to find out the intensities here, we don't need to know the specific values, we just want to know how much more one was to the other. So we want to know that rate. So we still need to switch to exponential form because we're still trying to find this ratio. We just don't need an I1 and an I2. In order to switch to exponential form, we have to remember that our base is a 10. When there's not a base written and it's written log, it's base 10. So we can actually subtract here. When we take 9.3 minus 8.7, we get 0.6. So log of our ratio of intensities equals 0.6. Switch it to exponential form. y equals b to the x power. Our base again is 10 because it's our common logarithm. x value is 0 0.6, 10 raised to the x power equals our intensity ratio, i1 over i2. We can approximate how much that is with our calculator. So take 10 raised to the 0.6 power and we get 3.98, which is about 4. So the ratio of our intensities is about 4, which means the December earthquake was about 4 times as intense as the March one. So 4 times as strong or as intense. So the ratio here is about 4. Again, we don't need to find an individual I value, I1 and I2. We just want that ratio. What is that ratio? And it tells us it was about four times as strong. Go ahead and try the got it problem on the bottom of page 453. It says, in 1995, an earthquake in Mexico registered 8.0 on the Richter scale. In 2001, an earthquake of magnitude 6.8 shook Washington state. How many times more intense was the 1995 earthquake than the 2001 earthquake? I'm going to give you guys a minute. Go ahead and pause it and try it. Okay, so again, we're going to use the same formula. formula common log of intensity 1 over intensity 2. The ratio of our intensities equals the magnitude of 1 minus the magnitude of 2. Okay, we're going to subtract those magnitudes on the Richter scale and then use our logarithm um, with that intensity ratio to find out how much more intense. So, uh, our magnitudes here, we have 8 for our first one, according to the problem, and 6.8 for the second. So we plug those in. 
Again, we're not searching for an individual I value. We're looking for the ratio. How many times more intense was it? We don't need the individual I values. We want to know how many times more intense was it, so we want that ratio. In order to solve this, we need to switch to exponential form. Once we simplify here, we get base 10. Our exponent, once we simplify, is this 8 minus 6.8, .8, which is 1.2. And again, it's log base 10 when we don't have one. Equals our intensity ratios. Now, take 10 raised to the 1.2 power. And we get 15.8489, okay? I'm going to go ahead and say that that's approximately 16 times as intense. And again, we don't need individual intensity values here. We just want to know what's the ratio there. How does the second one compare to the first one? First one compares to the second one, things like that. A logarithmic function is the inverse of an exponential function. And the graph of top, on the top of page 454 shows the exponential function and the logarithmic function, its inverse. So uh, here we have our exponential function in red and the logarithmic function in blue. And remember, when we have inverses, guys, we can just swap our x's and our y's. So in red, we have our exponential function that we started graphing in 7.1. Uh, we have the point 0, 1, and 1, 10, for example. To find our logarithmic function, we just invert those points. We swap them. Instead of being at 0, 1, we go to 1, 0. Instead of being at 1, 10, we switch the order and go to 10, 1. And we're going to use that same idea here on number four. What is the graph of y equals log base 3 of x? And then we're going to describe the domain and range, identify the y-intercept, and the asymptote. So uh, in order to graph a logarithmic function, we need to find the inverse. Remember we have 3 is our base to the y power equals x. If we were to switch this function right here into exponential form. To find the inverse now, we're going to swap our x and our y. To find our inverse, we swap the order. And we have 3 to the x power equals y. That's going to give us our inverse. So now we can plug some values in, make a table, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. 3 to the negative second power. 1 over 3 squared. To get rid of the negative exponent, we move it to the denominator, make it positive, and we get 1 ninth. 3 to the negative first power, same thing. To make it positive, we move it to the denominator. To make our exponent positive, we move it to the denominator, and we get 1 over 3. 3 to the 0 power is always just 1. 3 to the first power, we get 3. 3 to the second power, we get 9. So this is our inverse function. Now we are going to swap our values. Okay, x then y becomes y then x. And I'm going to have to stop this video here. I'm running out of time. I will be right back to start at this spot on the next one.